Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar looking at animation and keyframes inside Final Cut Pro 10. Keyframes have scared people for a long time. I remember it took me almost two years before I could finally figure out what keyframes do. But keyframes can do a lot, especially when we want stuff to move inside our projects. And the purpose of today's session is to show you some of the animation and keyframe options that exist inside Final Cut 10, take the fear away, and give you a chance to learn how to create some amazing effects. Let's get ourselves started. What I want to cover today is to define keyframes, show you how to create them in Final Cut Pro 10, illustrate effects that use keyframes, and then at the end of this presentation, I'll include keyframe keyboard shortcuts and keyboard enhancements for mouse movements. A keyframe is a point of change during playback. If nothing changes during playback, you don't need to use keyframes. We always work with keyframes in pairs. There's a starting keyframe and an ending keyframe. Now clearly you can use more than two keyframes, but it's always easiest to think of them working together in pairs. Where does an effect start? A particular parameter change, and where does that change end? A motion path is the path an object follows when it's moving through the frame, and I'll show you how to create one during the course of this webinar. There's a, a simple rule to use when you're using keyframes to create an effect. You create the finished effect first, then set keyframes. It's easier to use keyframes to transition into an effect than to build the entire effect from the beginning using keyframes. I'll show you both approaches and explain why I like this approach best during the course of today's webinar. Now keyframes scare a lot of people. I remember the first time I was introduced to them when I was working with Final Cut 3. I didn't understand them. It took me two years to figure out what keyframes were all about. A keyframe is a point of change during playback. And probably the easiest way to think about this is you notice the fade dot here. If I grab the fade dot and drag it to the right, I have a fade up that occurs in the audio of this clip. Notice that it's infinitely quiet and it quickly rises until it becomes as loud as we want it to be, the maximum loudness that we're setting for this clip. Well, although this is a fade dot, this is essentially two keyframes. A keyframe at the start, where there is no audio, and a keyframe at the end, where there is audio. So we look at the transition between keyframe number one and keyframe number two. If I want the fade up to occur more quickly, I drag the keyframe to the left. If I want the fade up to occur more slowly, drag the keyframe to the right. So I'm adjusting the timing of the keyframe by dragging horizontally. Well, let's just park that over to one side for a second because we can actually set keyframes in the audio because I want the audio levels to change as I am playing back this clip. I want it to get louder or softer depending upon what my talent is saying. Well, one way to do that is to hold the Option key down. Put the mouse right on top of the line. Notice that black square that lights up that says 0 dB. Option click and I've just created a keyframe. It's represented by that white diamond shape there. Hold the Option key down. Let's click, set another keyframe. Option click, we'll set another keyframe. I can now grab this keyframe and pull it way down, and it's going to start with the audio at full volume, fade the audio to black, then fade the audio from black back up to its full volume. I change the setting of the keyframe by dragging up and down, I change the timing of the keyframe by dragging from side to side. And once you start dragging up and down, you can't drag it from side to side, which prevents you from knocking it out from a timing or sync point of view. And once I start dragging side to side, I can't drag it up and down. We can do more than that, though. If we put our playhead here, type Option K. Option K creates a keyframe at the position of the playhead. If we turn skimming on, and go over to here. Option K creates a keyframe at the position of the skimmer. So we can create keyframes at the position of the cursor, or we can create keyframes at the position of the playhead or the skimmer by typing Option K. Let's do something else. By the way, if you ever need to reset something, we'll turn skimming off. Go up to the Audio tab of the Inspector. See where it says Volume and Pan? See this hooked arrow here? Click it, and all of your keyframes and all of your custom settings reset back to their default. So there's always a quick reset. 
well, wait a minute, you say, how do I delete a single keyframe? Well, let's hold the Option key down, Option click here, and if you click on a keyframe, notice how it changes to a gold diamond. Whichever gold box surrounds a keyframe, when you press the Delete key, that selected keyframe is removed. So, just to recapitulate, drag up and down to change the setting, drag side to side to change the timing, click on a keyframe to select it, hit the Delete key to make it disappear. There's one other cool thing I want to talk about before we leave this whole concept of audio. If you right mouse click or control click on the fade dot, it opens up a series of fade shapes. A fade shape allows you to change the shape of the fade as it goes from the beginning to the fade dot. A linear fade is a straight line fade. It's probably the best audio fade to use when you're fading to or from black. It's the default setting. An S-curve, also called an ease-in or ease-out, gently starts and gently lands, but accelerates quickly in the middle so that you have sort of a slow, fast, slow effect. The plus 3 dB is the best choice for audio when you're cross-fading between two steady-state noises. For instance, dissolving from an exterior scene where the crickets are chirping to an interior scene where the air conditioner is running. You want to have a smooth blending of crickets into air conditioner. You want to use the plus 3 dB fade. The negative 3 dB fade I use when I've got a sharp breath that I want to minimize, but I want still to have a fade. So I'll put this right where the breath or the click or pop is. I use the negative 3 dB when I need to minimize a breath. I use plus 3 dB when I'm crossfading between two audio sources. I don't use the S-curve much at all for audio. I use it for other things, but not for the audio. And when I'm going to and from black, I'll use the linear fade. So the two that I use the most are linear and plus 3 dB. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on animation and keyframes inside Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz slash store. And look for Webinar 105. Thanks. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all of our videos for one low monthly price of only $19.99. More than 600 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers both Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions.